Welcome to 2024. It's the first week of January and the Ontario Hockey League season back in full swing. It's the second half of the season officially underway and we're going to do our first look at the power rankings after the week that was. And I know it was asked uh, in the comments section on the previous power rankings video. These are not the OHL's power rankings. These are my own. I've got a formula and a system that I've come up with uh, because I felt like at the beginning of the season, I had some questions about the OHL's power ranking system. And I thought, why not give it a try myself? So these are my power rankings. Let me know in the comments down below your thoughts on them and uh, maybe give uh, your own power rankings. It's always cool to have the conversations. And let's dive into these power rankings, starting with number 20. It's the Sarnia Sting. They fell two positions this week. Uh, they were one and two last week, and they had two ugly losses in a home and home against the London Knights, where they were outscored 11 to three. Uh, the Sting, they are four points out of a playoff spot, but just three wins in their last 10 games. So it's been a bit of a tough stretch right now for Sarnia. Easton Wainwright, though, he's been a bright spot. He had uh, three points in the game against the Windsor Spitfires, including the OT winner. So Wainwright. Uh, looking not too shabby with Sarnia right now. They do have three games this week. A home, they're at home to the Peterborough Peets tomorrow night, and then they travel to Barrie and Guelph to wrap up the week. At number 19, it's the Barrie Colts. They moved out of the basement. They're up one position. They got off to a good start for the second half, going two and one. One of those wins was in a shootout against the Sudbury Wolves, which is pretty big in the uh, Central Division race. Uh, ben West, though, the goaltender, huge in both of those wins against Sudbury and Owen Sound. Can't say enough about how good Ben West was in those two games. Uh, Jacob Frasca also back in the lineup from his hip injury. Uh, he got a goal in the one, in the game against the Brantford Bulldogs where they lost 6-1. to one. So it's good to see Frasca back on the score sheet. Uh, but they did lose the services of Chris Grizzolia in that game against the Bulldogs. So not sure his status going forward, but uh, hopefully we'll get an update in regards to Grizzolia soon. Uh, the Bray Colts, they do have a very tough 3-3 three three coming up this week, starting at home Thursday against Sarnia. Travel to London on Friday night before hosting the first place uh, in the West Division, the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. At number 18, the Niagara Ice Dogs, they fell one position this week. They went 1-2 and two last week, started off with a very ugly loss, 10-2 in Owen Sound against the attack, but then they ended the week uh, with a comeback victory over the Guelph Storm in overtime. 6-5 was the final in that one. Andrew Wysick, he was the hero in the game against the Storm. And for Wysick, uh, he's got goals in back-to-back -back games now. So far this season, five goals, three assists, eight points in 25 games. So it's good to see that uh, Wysick starting to pick things up with Niagara. The Ice Dogs, just two games this week, both at home. They're going to take on Owen Sound and Windsor. At number 17, we have the Peterborough Peets. They fell one position. They were one and two last week. Peterborough, though, they were able to snap that six-game losing streak when they shut out Mississauga 4-0 New Year's Eve, so a great win to end 2023. Uh, but I think with the way things are going right now, this is a sign of things to come for the Peets. Uh, they're going to be looking forward to the future. Last year, they emptied the draft cupboard to pick up uh, players like Owen Beck uh, leading up to that championship run. So no surprise uh, when we see that uh, there's a lot of talk about players maybe say, being traded out of Peterborough. There'll be a team to watch at the OHL trade deadline, which is scheduled for next Wednesday, so January 10th. And, of course, we'll have the live stream, so we'll follow along with what goes on with the trade deadline. Uh, the Peets, though, they do have a three-game road trip coming up. It starts in Sarnia before going to Flint and Saginaw. At number 16, we have the Mississauga Steelheads. They fell two positions. The Steelheads had a rough start to the second half of the season, going one and two. Uh, but the Steelheads, they've been dealing with injuries. Uh, the injury bug has hit their team. Also, Adam Zidlicki at the World Juniors playing with Team Czechia. So they're missing some key players. Uh, so they have had a shortened bench on that team. Mississauga is still a very uh, potent offense. Porter Mortone, uh, he continues to be a bright spot with Mississauga. He's now third in the OHL in goals with 27 to go with Luke Misa, who is second overall in assists with 35. So this is still a very potent offense. Uh, when it comes to Mississauga, they do have a three and three this week, starting on the road in Kingston Friday. They host London and then travel to Brantford. At number 15, we have the Windsor Spitfires. They fell two positions. The Spitfires went 1 0 and 2 and now have points in four straight games as they're just trying to claw their way back into the playoff picture in the Western Conference. Right now, six points out of the eighth spot in the West. So they were out by 10 points not too long ago. And 
getting points in consecutive games. The Windsor Spitfires uh, starting to show that maybe this is a team to watch uh, going into the second half. Oliver Peer, he had three points in the win against Mississauga, and he has points in five of his last six games. So Windsor, a team not to take lightly despite their spot in the standings. They do host Flint tomorrow, so that game is going to be huge before heading out onto the road to face the Erie Otters and the Niagara Ice Dogs. Coming in at number 14, we have the Kingston Frontenacs. They're up five positions, one of the big climbers this week. Uh, look out for Kingston. They were 3-0 last week, including a sweep in the home-and-home home against the Ottawa 67s. Kingston, they might be a real threat in the East. They're riding a four-game winning streak. They've won seven of their last 10 games. And the East Division right now, it's open. And don't be surprised if Kingston is one of the buyers at the trade deadline next week. They only have two games this week. They're home to uh, Mississauga, and then they travel to Ottawa. So they play the 67s once again. At number 13, we have the Owen Sound Attack. They're down two positions. They started a, the week with a 10-2 win at home against Niagara, but followed that up uh, with losses against Kitchener and Barry. Uh, they did get Colby Barlow back from his back injury, which is great news. He got a pair of goals in his return. Uh, Denny Gore set a franchise record, eight points in the win against the Ice Dogs, while Ethan Burroughs also had a solid game of six points. So this is an Owen Sound attack team that they can score in bunches. They've got the goaltending with Carter George, but do they buy? Do they sell? Do they stand pat? Uh, and Owen Sound might be a very interesting team to follow these next couple of weeks. They do have a 3-3 three three this week, starting on the road against Erie and Niagara before returning home to face the Guelph Storm. At number 12, the Flint Firebirds, no change from last week. The Firebirds, they were 1-2, started with a 5-3 win in Kitchener, which is huge. But then they had a 2-1 you know, lead going into the second period on the road against the London Knights, but they just couldn't hold it. For Flint, it's a consistency right now, uh, playing that full 60 minutes. I know it's a cliche, but uh, for the Firebirds... It seems like they have potential with this team. Uh, they're just falling short right now. So for Flint, maybe they can turn it around. Is this a team that's going to sell? Uh, I think there's a lot of question marks with this team. And then they've got Sarnia and Windsor not far behind them in those Western Conference standings. Uh, they are in Windsor tomorrow. So that is a big game when it comes to playoff implications in the West. Uh, then they're going to host Peterborough and Oshawa. Speaking of the Oshawa Generals, they come in at number 11. They fell two positions. Uh, they took a bit of a step back, going one and two. They had an overtime win on the road, though, against the North Bay Battalion, where Dalen Robrick, he was the hero in overtime. The Generals, five points ahead of Barry right now in the Eastern Conference standings, but they have a 6-3-1 record over their last 10 games. Oshawa, I think this is a team that should make the playoffs. They've got the talent. Jacob Oster, he's looked pretty good between the pipes, so I wouldn't count out Oshawa just yet. Uh, the Generals, they host Sault Ste. Marie tomorrow. That's going to be a big challenge. And then they head to Flint's and Saginaw. Number 10, the Ottawa 67s, they fell three positions. And it's been a rough go for the 67s of late. They were 0-3 last week, and they're now on a four-game losing streak, all four losses in regulation. Uh, both of their goaltenders, they were top five in point percentage and goals against in the OHL, but... They've been struggling of late to keep the puck out of the net, giving up 21 go goals over this losing streak. So times have been tough right now for Ottawa as they try and stop the bleeding. Uh, two games this week at home, that's it. North Bay and Kingston, and they lost two games last week to the Frontenacs. So Kingston has not been kind to Ottawa, so the 67s will have to change that in the nation's capital. At number nine, we have the Erie Otters, the biggest climber, six positions, the Otters, they were 2-1 and one last week, and that includes a big 7-4 win over the East-leading Brantford Bulldogs. And you cannot take this Erie Otters team lightly. They're the, this is the highest they've been in the power rankings all season. They just shot up. Uh, the Otters, they're sixth in the Western Conference, six wins in their last 10 games, and they're just finding ways to get it done. So Erie wanting to snap that playoff drought and looking pretty confident right now. They are in London tomorrow, and then they're going to host Owen Sound and Windsor. Number eight, it's the Sudbury Wolves. They moved up two positions. The Wolves 2-0-1 last week, and they've taken over top spot in the Eastern Conference. They did have a shootout loss against the Barry Colts, but that came down to a hot goaltender. And then the offense, it's just firing on all cylinders. A big win on, against North Bay. And then they also won in Sault Ste. Marie. So this is a team that a lot of people picked to win the Eastern Conference, and maybe things are starting to show. 
Still no Delbor Dvorsky. He's at the World Juniors. He should be returning soon. And then Jakob Vondras also at the World Juniors. Uh, so this is a team. They're, expect them to add at the OHL trade deadline. I think the Sudbury Wolves, they're only going to get better. It's just hopefully that chemistry uh, that they're building right now can continue and they can continue moving forward and play more disciplined hockey. We're starting to see that with the Sudbury Wolves. And if they can do that, I think that's a recipe for success and they'll only continue to climb these power rankings. Um, coming up this week, though, they have two games at home, two very big contests. First is the Brantford Bulldogs and then the Kitchener Rangers, so two very tough opponents. At number seven, we have the North Bay Battalion, who fell two positions. It was a pretty average week for the troops, going 1-1-1. One, one, and one. Although that one loss, they fell 8-4 to Sudbury, so that was a tough break. Uh, the Battalion, they've been playing without Ty Nelson, who's at the World Juniors, but Anthony Romani, he continues to get the job done. He's now tied Carson Rakoff of the Rangers in points with 55. Although Rakoff, of course, he's been at the World Juniors, so his numbers have kind of stalled because he's at the juniors. Uh, so Anthony Romani looking pretty good right now. Uh, North Bay, they're hosting Brantford Thursday night before heading to Ottawa. And then they return home to play Kitchener on Sunday. So quite the trek uh, for their three games this weekend. Number six, the Guelph Storm, no change. They went 2-0-1 last week. It was a disappointing loss, though, in Niagara against the Ice Dogs, where they were up 4-2 going into the third period. And they needed a late goal from Max Nemesnikov to force overtime. So not the way you want to end the week, especially against the Ice Dogs. But the big question, though, remains, does Matthew Poitra return to Guelph or does he go to Boston? Uh, we're still waiting for official word. I know Team Canada has been eliminated at the World Juniors, so we should be getting that answer soon. And that decision will likely decide what Guelph does at the OHL trade deadline. They do have a 3-3 three and three this week, starting at home against Sault Ste. Marie. Then they travel to Owen Sound, and then they host Sarnia. For the Brantford Bulldogs, they're at number five now. They're up three positions. The Bulldogs, two and one last week. They've taken over top spot in the East Division. And I really like this team. When you've got players like Nick Lardis, Merrick Van Acker, Luca Testa, Jorian Donovan, Noah Van Vliet, Matteo Drobak. I think this team is a bit of a dark horse in the East. No one was picking Brantford to win the East Division, but they've got a good lineup. We saw how... The Bulldogs were in the playoffs against Barry last year. This is a very resilient team. Drawback, I think, is a bit of an underrated goaltender in the Ontario Hockey League. This is a team, uh, just like Kingston, they're seeing that the East is open. And they're, they could be a team that's going to take a shot at it, maybe add some depth. Um, I, and don't be surprised if they make a move that, you know, some teams might find a bit of a surprise. Uh, they are in Sudbury and North Bay this week before returning home to host Mississauga. So, that northern road trip, never easy, and we'll see uh, what they can do. Number four, we have the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds. They fell one position. Uh, it was a big test to start the second half of the regular season. Uh, they went one and two. They opened with a win against Saginaw before losing to the Spirit and the Wolves. This Greyhounds team, they are solid. They've been without two of their big pieces with uh, Owen Allard with Team Canada and R2 Karki uh, with Finland at the World Juniors. And this week, they are on the road. So a tough road trip starting tomorrow in Oshawa uh, before going to Guelph and then wrapping it up Saturday in Barrie. At number three, we have the London Knights. They fell a position, and there is a log jam when it comes to the top teams in the Western Conference. Uh, for the Knights, they're in the thick of it. They went 3-0 and last week and have won six in a row. But you know what? Two of those wins were against the Sarnia Sting. So I know a lot of people like, but it was against Sarnia. They should win those games. But if they didn't win those games, we'd have a whole different conversation right now. So a win is a win. They're getting the points. They're trying to claw their way uh, back uh, to maybe compete with Kitchener for top spot in the Midwest division. But uh, really, time will tell. Uh, Denver Barkey, he had a big week. He had two goals, six assists, good for eight points in those three games. The Knights, they host Erie tomorrow, then Barry on Friday before traveling to Mississauga on Saturday. At number two, we have the Kitchener Rangers. They're up two positions. They went two and one last week, and they just continue to get things done without the services of Carson Rakoff and Philip Machar. Uh, Hunter Brustevich, he now leads the OHL in scoring with 58 points, which, if you think about it, it's remarkable. He's a defenseman. Uh, we haven't seen a defenseman lead the OHL in scoring since 1989 that was brian fogarty when he played with the niagara falls thunder that is the last time we have a defenseman be first in scoring and hunter prostevich 
with the Kitchener Rangers has a chance to make history this season if he can continue this pace in the second half of the season. Uh, they do have a big test this week. Uh, the Rangers, they host Saginaw Thursday, and then they travel to Sudbury and North Bay. So not an easy week for Kitchener. And at number one, spending uh, the last four weeks now in the number one spot on the OHL Power Rankings, it's the Saginaw Spirit. They went 2-1, and one, and uh, they earned wins over the Spitfires and Greyhounds to end the week after losing to Sault Ste. Marie. Michael Misa, he's picking up points in three of his last four games, including two goals in the win against Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, the Spirit, they are getting the job done. They are going to be a, an interesting team to watch at the OHL trade deadline because they've already said they're going all in. They want to go in through the front door at hosting the Memorial Cup, uh, which is going to add some pressure, I think, on other teams in the West, especially Sault Ste. Marie. They've got that lead right now in the West Division. They're going to be keeping a close eye on what Saginaw does at the OHL trade deadline. It's going to be a, a power uh, match uh, for the Western Conference teams, and I think it all starts with the Saginaw spirit. We're just waiting, I think, for the dominoes to start falling in regards to trades, and I would not be surprised now that the World Junior run is done for Team Canada. We should hear some movements uh, soon in regards to probably Owen Beck. And from what it sounds like, Sault Ste. Marie might be the front runner on Owen Beck services, but don't want to speculate on what the trade could involve, but still uh, keep an eye on that. It's going to be interesting, and we'll be doing the live stream on Wednesday as we follow along with the OHL trade deadline and also post videos uh, if we have any trades between now and the OHL trade deadline. Uh, but that is the trade deadline for the general sense for the OHL. The overager trade deadline is on the 9th, so next Tuesday. So we've got a week uh, to decide uh, what's going to happen with overagers. And I know for the Barry Colts, waiting to find out about Anson Thornton, if he's coming back from the Arizona Coyotes. So if Thornton comes back, then you're going to have four overagers at the Barry Colts. Two of them are goaltenders, Ben West and Anson Thornton. So you know something has to give. Uh, but uh, don't be surprised if we hear a move involving Anson Thornton. That's just from what it sounds like, uh, but nothing is confirmed at this point. So let me know in the comments section down below your thoughts on the OHL power rankings and maybe any thoughts on the trade deadline coming up. Remember to hit like and subscribe, and we'll talk to you again soon.